Good day. We're learning and finishing today chapter 51, Pedic Nun Aleph and Tanya. We're on page I and Bays. And we're about 10 lines to the bottom. After the first word on that line is Lai with a period. We're at we're holding at the word Vihatahtainim. Just to bring you up to speed here. Al Tareb is explaining the concept of how Maisehu Ho'ikar. Those are words we heard from the Rebbe thousands of times. Action is primary. Action speaks louder than anything else. Those were the Rebbe's words. The words of the Zayar HaKadosh is Uvdan Tavan. In order to forget the, to get the oil to burn and to light the candle to be lit, and needs oil in the parable brought <clears throat> by the Yenuka in the Zohar, which is mentioned as chapter 35. So you need this oil. What's the oil? You would think the oil is wisdom, intelligence, and study, and learning. And the Zohar says, no, it's Uvdan Tovan. It's the good deeds. So the Alter Rebbe, since chapter 35, spent time focusing on that, and it addresses what we learned on the cover page of Tanya, the title page, which was written by the Alter Rebbe himself, the author, and part of it, part of it, and he says there that this book, this Sefer Tanya, is based on the verse, For the Torah is very near you, in your mouth, in your heart, to act upon. And we understand, as he explains in various chapters, that out of all the three things, and is the Iker. is not the Iker, your mouth not the primary mode of connection, your heart, your emotions are not, but it's action. And that's the whole thrust of the Sefer. So on one hand, you could kind of simplify all these flute and tootin' ideas that we're learning, levels of souls, levels of angels, levels of, of, of God, the way that God, God permeates the world, the way Hashem encompasses the world, all the things that we're learning and will continue to learn. With saying uh, saying it very shortly, saying well, what's the Tanya about? Action. But that would that would be oversimplifying it. And for that, you could take out a kitz of Shulchan Aruch and it'll tell you how to act as a Jew. So obviously, the action orientation that the Alter Rebbe and Tanya teaches is a different type of action, meaning it's the inspiration to action, it's the depth within action, so that when you act, your action is imbued with life and energy. Right? Imagine you're in a shul, you're standing, you're at a table, and there's someone else sitting next to you, and a third person, and one person puts on tefillin, and the man you see is on fire. And I don't mean only if they're closing their eyes or they're shaking or they're screaming or they're crying. You just could see that this person is has been is been absorbed by the mitzvah and the mitzvah is all over him. There's another person who's putting on film is doing it because that's what you do as a from Jew. You put on film in the morning, go to shul. And then there's a third person who puts on the tefillin meditates, reflects, studies a little Hasidus before, and, and you see that the person is, is in between, right? Three different people at one table doing the same action, but it's three different actions. It's three different behaviors. So the Tanya, the Alter Rebbe, in the Tanya, talks about the different behaviors in action. One's called a tzaddik, one's called a rasha, and in between we have a benedi. And he says, fellas, I'm not here to talk about really the tzaddikim or the rishoyim. My book is for the average person. I'm talking to you, to us. And this is what he's dedicated himself to. And this is why the Tanya is such a a wonderful 
teaching and course for every single Jew. Because every, every Jew is the average Jew, the potential best. So here, when we get to chapter 51, it's a kickback to 35, which is a kickback to the title page. And here he says, since action is what, what speaks loudest, what's this idea that Hashem finds himself, we, we find in Chazal, Hashem finds himself, for example, in the Kochi Kochim, the Holy of Holies. He says, God is all over. So, what's this idea that this is the place of God and this is not the place of God? To explain that, he uses a muscle of the neshama, of the soul, of our soul, our neshama. And he says that we find by the neshama the same thing. As I explained yesterday at length, the three ideas of the neshama, nekuda, kav, and shetach, point, line, and space, shetach. Nekuda is what we call in Hasidus the etzem ha-neshama, the essence of the soul. And that's equal to every single Jew. You're born to a Jewish mother, you had a proper Jewish conversion, you have the etzem, nekuda of a yid, what we call the Yiddish pintal a yid, pintal, point, quintessential, quintessential Jew. That's it. I don't care how long your cuckoo is or how short your haircut is, it makes no difference. That's, that's the kuda. That's the manashama. Okay, that's very, very nice. But once we come into this world, we encounter experiences that seem to contradict this essence of, of the neshama. And guess what? Sometimes we fall into that trap. And all of a sudden, we're not expressing a living etzem ha We have it. It's always there by a yid, but we're not living it that way. So Dal Rebbe says that's true. And you know why? Because when the essence of the neshama manifests itself, it, it manifests itself in a way that the receiver or the receptacle, the receptor is significant and makes a difference. And there we have a difference between the brain, the, the, the emotions, and the action. And it happens to be that the brain, as he said already in chapter 9 of Tanya, is the abode for the neshama, right? For the meichen, the, the brain. And that we call, not the etzem on neshama, we call that chai be'etzem. Chai from the word chayut. Energy, vitality, chai be'etzem, the vita- vitality within the essence. So you're not talking about the essence in its very core essence. You're talking about an energy that comes from the essence. Once you give credence to an energy from the essence, it's one step removed from essence. And if it's one step removed, it's a thousand steps removed. Why? Because once you leave essence, you're in the domain of the visibility. The, the difference between essence of soul and life within essence is ad infinitum difference. One is non-divisible because by its very core it's non-divisible and one is divisible in various ways and happens to be that the first point of divisibility is within the brain very nice but it's already been divided and it already has a place so Chaim Zev, that's why Tanya says in chapter 9 where is the Moke Mishke Nefesh Elokiz he says the Moichel Shebarosh in the moach within the head, right? Because we're already talking about the world of the visibility. So once you, so therefore you could say, you know, this one is, is this is their profession. This is the everyone has their thing. Because we're talking about, we have already accepted that there is a a way where the neshama manifests itself. So as soon as it manifests itself. It opens itself up for the visibility. Finally, so that would be the kav, 
not the nekuda, the quintessential soul. That's the line of the soul. Line meaning that there's many nekudot on the line, and they make up a line. But they're all nekudot of a line, meaning nekudot points with indivisibility. But from there comes about the third stage, which is the stage of shetach, place, area, rural land, right? Go out to Idaho and the uh, potato farms, right? Lots of land. Shetach. Today we pay a lot of money for shetach. It's called real estate, especially if you're in a very high real estate area of Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, uh, Boston, etc., right? And in Archer's Roll, uh, it seems like all over is already <laughs> very expensive, the shetach. You got to go somewhere in the Golan or in Steyrot, you know, unfortunately, because of all the issues, you know, we probably still can get a deal half decently. But the point is that Shetach is really where it's the battleground. Shetach is the battleground. When the battleground, in this case, is Yetzirah, Yetzirah, jealousy, you know, uh, uh, greediness, everything is a Shetach. So the Alter Rebbe says the Neshama has the essence, its essence. It has the way the Neshama is, and then it has the way this same Neshama that's within the brain, uh, in the head, is the nerve center for every other thing that comes from it. Including even the heart, as he said in the brackets of the bottom of page 142. And that's why Mayach Shalat Alalev Betoldusay. Dr. Rebbe says, you know, why the, the, the mind over matter by nature, that's the Chiddush, Betoldusay. Genetically, it's because the heart itself receives energy from the Mayach. So if the heart itself receives from the Mayach, the Mayach has a certain say over the heart, i.e., mind over matter, the paradigm shift. The, the, the idea that, that the mind can control the heart if you just use your mind, access your mind, learn how to use your mind, and you will, you will tame and control better your heart, your emotions. So now, Dr. Rebbe is explaining still this concept in, in what we call the worlds, the upper worlds, El Yoinim, and the lower worlds, Tachtoinim, like I sang in the Nigan yesterday during the Shir, God is lauded in the upper worlds, and the lower worlds, and what did they all come to? The same conclusion. You are one, and there is no other. But nevertheless, who is making that conclusion? El Yoinim. Angel souls are the heavenly creations, creatures. And then there is the lower creatures. Now within the lower creatures... We talk about the world of Asiya. What does it mean, the world of action? So you would think, Avram, the world of action means, you know, that the famous story with the Rebbe Marash, where the Chassid said, Rebbe, there is no world. Everything is bottle. Everything is nullified to God. Enoid Bovadoi. So the Rebbe Marash said, lay down on the table. Let me give you some, some uh, lashes. And we'll see if there's no world. We'll see how you jump up from the table. Ah, stop, it hurts. There is no world, right? Or take another example. Just put some money into the bank. If someone does a fraud, then all of a sudden the money's not there or it's less money. Boy, you jump and you tr- and you, you put out a, you know, you let your credit card know and the bank know. In other words, there's no, there's, there's a world, there's no world. There's, there's no world. They ain't no body. Nothing happened. So what's the point? In the world of Asiya, in the world of action, the, the physical world of action, which you call Gashmi Vachumri, the physical and corporeal world, everything is very real. Okay? Then there is the counterpart to the world of Gashmi, which is called Olam Ha'asiya Haruchni. So, Hebra, when we talk 
in Hasidus and we and in Kabbalah and the different Sfarim you learn and you, and you learn about the four worlds Arba Elamis Abaya A Atzilus Ba Bria Ya Yitzira A Asiya Abaya Alav Beis Yudayin Right? We're not talking about physical physical stuff that you can because like you hold a football and you throw a football. What you, Yoel used to, you know, teach here in Borough Park. Tanya and Chassidus, Tanya, and to a, a lot of the Polish, you know, the Hungarian Polish, and they didn't have the Chabad background, and they came to learn, you know. And, and one of them said, and he was talking about this idea of spirituality and Oilamis, and 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 someone like commented, "Is so? Where can I see this? It's like." Where can I buy it? At Sears for five bucks? I mean, where, where, where can I see it? You're talking about metaphysics. You're talking about ruchnius. So the counterpart to Olam HaAsiyah, Gashmi, is what we call Olam HaAsiyah, the world of action, Haruchni. And this is what the al Tareb is going to address now. Both Olam HaAsiyah, Gashmi, and Olam Now look, let's look inside. That was my prelude, and it should help clarify what we're going to learn in the text. Inside. The, the lower ones, even the spiritual ones, don't think that they have so much revelation from God. The energy that they get is enclosed in many garments. Asher ain't self baruchu malbish behem achayis vehoir that Hashem invests his energy in his light. Hashem mamshichum meir lehem lachayisam. Hashem gives them, is drawn to them, and illuminates them to enliven them. But through garments, through a disguise, the kol kach, chaf chaf here is an acronym, the kol kach. Otsmu the Gavru, and so much is the disguise, it Otsmu, it strengthened itself, the Gavru, and overpowered Halavushim, these garments are so overwhelming and so powerful, that God is able to invest and disguise within them, the energy. To the point where the energy is so dim, is sir, that from that energy God uses to create the physical kapori world, mamish. When he creates it and he enlivens it, with energy and light, which he draws to it and, and illuminates it, a light, he repeats, that's invested and covered and concealed within these many garments. There's so many of these spiritual garments that they conceal the true light and energy until you don't see and it's not apparent any light and any energy. Let's go to the next page. 144. Rak dvorim chumriyim. What we see is corporeal matter, material matter, the gashmiyim, physical matter. Venirim mason. And at times it seems like the dead, right? The stone, the rock is dead, seems dead. Guess what? Sometimes a person is alive, but it's like he's dead, he's lifeless. And I don't mean, I don't mean here a depression. We're talking about someone who's not depressed. But you don't see life in them. Animation. Ach nevertheless within them, yesh or v'chayis. There is light and energy. Ha-mechaya oisam. That enlivens the me'ayon yesh from nothing to something. Tamid. Now, yesteryear. Not at a good time when it's a celebration, but tell me constantly, 
Good, bad, ugly, great, makes no difference. They wouldn't be here otherwise. Like he says, next, so that they don't revert to be naught and nothing. As they were pre-creation. This light, but who it is from the infinite God. Rak, he repeats again, the reason why it appears to be silent and dead and unlively is because it's been invested in many garments. As written in that the light and the vitality of the physical earth ball the material, the corporeal earth ball, the earth. Hanina Leine Bosa that we see. Really? The Eitz Chaim says, you know what you're looking at? Humi Malchus, the Malchus Dasiyu Vitecha, Malchus the Yitzira. It comes from, <coughs> from godliness as godliness ex- ex- uh, invests itself in the, in the idea of Malchus, Malchus within Malchus, Malchus within Yitzira, and all that. Acha Betech Kulon Yitzviras Datsilis. It has an association to the ten spheres of the world of Atzilut, the highest of the four worlds, which are united with its creator. We call it not creator. Matzilon means emanator. What is he saying here? He's saying here that Hashem created the world and and in order for the Gashmias to come about, and especially the corporeality, the Chumrias, Hashem put a, 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 on himself many garments so, so that the essential light should be hidden. Because otherwise it would be too much, or for he wanted we should have free will for various reasons. He doesn't go into the reasons here. But he's just saying you should know that, that, that it's all Levushim. So what he's doing here in this last part of the ch- chapter is saying to us that whether it's El Yoinim that we learned about yesterday's year, whether it's Tachtoinim, which we learned about now, the upper, the lower, it's all from Hashem, it's all from God, but God has different formats of disguising himself, of hiding himself. It's like I guess impersonators, or they have these, I don't know what you call them, I don't, I just see about them, people who make fun on late night shows of presidents and other people, you know, you know, it's like one time they'll show them this way, and one time they'll show them this way. Lahavdil, Lahavdil, here we're talking about Hashem. Hashem wants that the world, from the perspective of the angels, should be seen a certain way. He wants the world to be look, to be seen from the perspective of the souls another way. He wants the perspective of the world from our perspective to be this and this way. And guess what? Within our world, each and every one has a different perspective. So all everything everything in Moshe is part of levushim, the garments. So what we walk away with in the chapter is that if you know that it's God in the Levushim, don't get lost to the garments. Don't be fooled by the dress up, by the, by, by, you understand? And it's interesting, it's coming to Purim, right? What happened over here? What kind of nest did we have Purim? It was a nest with Teva. It was a nest that was enclosed in nature. You have a king, then you have a queen. You have a Haman, and you have a Esther. You have a Mordechai, and you have the Sarisim, and you have the advisors, and this guy wants to get rid of this guy. You know, you could, if you take every individual detail, I'm learning now, Mesephus Megillah, and it goes through many, many Dipsukim. It's very interesting. And different rabbis and different comments. But as I'm learning, I'm thinking how you could take these details and say each individual thing is not miraculous. Right? For example, Ahasuerus wanted to uh, show off the beauty of, 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 of Vashti, right? 
So he makes a big party. He also wanted to placate his enemies. I mean, it wasn't, right, because there was war before, and he became the king of the, 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 over 127 countries, right? So he figures he'll kill two birds with one stone. He'll make a big party, celebrate, showing everyone, hey, I'm a nice guy, show off his, 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 his pretty wife, right? And um, that will lead to them embracing him and saying, oh yeah, we find you have good grace, we like you, Akashverosh. <laughs> What's miraculous about that? It sounds like a sensible plan. I mean, you could question, you know, uh, for example, did he reach out more to the people who were distant, far away from his palace, from his country? Or did he show more Kirov to those that were closer? It's a machlekes in the Gemara, two opinions, what he should have done, right? But it's all sensible, it's arguable, it's positions, th this way or that way, you could think it, right? But when you put everything together, so, so one second, all of these details is what the Alter Rebbe is calling here, you need the levushim. These are the garments that Hashem made at the time of Mordechai and Esther 2,000 years ago, etc., for us to have Yeshua, to be saved as a nation. So he dresses us up in a certain way. And if you look at it individually, Everything by itself, as I said, it's not a miracle. When you put it all together, you see it's the Yad Hashem. It's the Yad Hashem. Mom is the Yad Hashem. But it's so what type of miracle is it? Chazal say it's what we call Nes Betoich Teva. A Nes within the, the laws and confines of rule and convention. Now, today we're saying the same thing here in his language. You see, you have to be, when you learn Chassidus, and you, and you learn Nigla, and you have a, bi a bigger picture, it falls into place. It's the same, uh, same as what Chazal is saying, what the Gemara is saying, but in different words. So rather than getting scared, oh, I'm learning Kabbalah, you're not learning Kabbalah, you're actually learning a piece of Gemara, but just on a way where maybe it talks to you more because you, we relate, you know, when we talk about the spiritual and the metaphysical, we say, oh, really, tell me more about it. It's unknown, I really want to know. Who am I? Where did I come from? My daughter put one of, uh, she was learning with someone in Tel Aviv. She wanted to know about the soul. She says, you want to know about the soul? Talk to my father. <laughs> so she calls me up. So I say, listen, you sure you want to know about yourself? You want me to regress you and tell you who you were? It's going to cost you a lot of money. <laughs> the point is, the point is, people, oh, who was I? Was I in the Holocaust? Was I in the Spanish Inquisition? Was I a Jew? Was I male? Maybe I was a female. Or a question was, can the soul of a male be reincarnated into a female and vice versa? That's the question she asked my daughter. <laughs> my daughter said, that's not my department. Talk to my father. He probably can answer you. But, and the answer is yes, as it says in Kisvi Arizal. But all I'm saying is, a lot of people in the yeshiva world when they hear that, they run a mile away, like, get out of here. What are you, abnormal? You, you, you know, well, you have nothing. You finished already Shas. You know Chumash Rashi and Ramban and Arachayim and Kleyokar, that you're talking about souls. But when you, when you, when you learn all of Torah, you try to, and you learn this, you learn that, it fits in. It's all one Torah. It's not a new Torah. You know, anyway, so Dal I mean, I conclude with this Nakud over here, that the Hislapshu, the Levushin, the garments are the disguise, but it's the same God, the same Hashem in everything. And that's how he answers the question. The question was, is the Shechina the Kachim Kachim or the Shechina all over? The answer is, there's a level of Shechina that's only the Kachim Kachim, but that's not the essence. The essence of God is all over. The manifestation of God, the, the Levushim of God, the, the clothing, the disguise, the costumes, that's differences. And that's why there's no contradiction between Molech Halorz Kavaydeh. And we have to train ourselves to be sensitized to this. So on one hand, I told you this, that uh, this fellow came up to the Rebbe 
1973, on a, a coldest January day in, in New York, it was freezing, and he stops the Rebbe as he gets out of his car, going up the steps to 770, and he says, Mr. Lubavitcher Rebbe, you're the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and what's the Rebbe say? Yeah, I'm the Lubavitcher Rebbe. The Rebbe doesn't 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 say, I, and he and he, he was very angry. He was, uh, you know, he was a '60s product, which you guys know what that means. And he he says with anger in his eyes, "Are you the Lubavitcher Rebbe?" And the Rebbe shakes his head. So he says, "V." He knew Yiddish. He came from a Holocaust family. V is God. Where is God? So the Rebbe says, Ibaral, all over. So he says, if God is Ibaral, if God is all over, why is there a Christian God and a Muslim God and a Jewish God and everyone wants to kill each other and we have war and, right? Good question. The Rebbe explained to him briefly, very briefly, because it's freezing outside and he has to go to his office. The Rebbe said to him, the Christian God, oh no, I'm sorry, sorry. The Rebbe said, God is in the heart. So he said, so if so, what, what's this difference between the religions? So, the, so he answered, the, the Rebbe told him, the Christian serves God with his heart, the Muslim with his heart, and the Jew with his heart. Study kids of Shulchan Aruch and put on tefillin and have a great day. And he continued to up. And he told me, Elliot, it's online, you could see the video. He told me himself, he told himself the story before it went public, that um, that it, you know, he, didn't, he didn't walk away putting on film the next morning because he was very angry and upset with Judaism. But after a while, he thought about the Rebbe's answer and he saw that, yeah, there's a, Hashem is made, that's what we're learning here, Levushim. Christians, Muslims, Jews, others, Levushim. So on one hand, on one hand, the Levushim are real. But at the same time, there is, there is a God of the Christians. A God. There's the way Christians understand God, Muslims, and Jews. And everyone, in their, whatever their religion is, should practice it. Like I told you, that I read once that Eber Hashab in Russia, when he, when he passed a, a funeral, sometimes he would tip his head, a Goyesha funeral. That, because again, he's not looking at the Levushim, the Levushim, a church, you know, and, and Tuma, you're right, it's not for us, right? There's halachas and all that. But there's something greater, and if you identify with that, and it's, with, with, it, it's within halacha, has to be within halacha, not breaking halacha, and not for us to say, I can do what I want, that's fine. There's nothing wrong to tip your hat, right? It says, for example, you shouldn't say, I'm going to meet you at a, a place of Avodah Zorah. If you make the place of Avodah Zorah an identified place, and that's where you, you tell your friend, I'm going to meet you there, that's forbidden. That's what I believe in the Rambam. But tipping your hat, if that's the way you acknowledge God, you know. So I'm saying, it's all the Fushim. And that's, that's why this is a significant chapter in Tanya, because it identifies and explains this issue. Hevra, have a great Shabbos, everyone, and we'll see everyone on Hashem. On Monday, we'll start chapter 52. Zayt Gazun, take care. Shabbos, Shabbos, Shabbos.